We are following two big political stories tonight at 5. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is stepping down at the request of President Trump. And back at home, hours after the midterm election, Democratic congressional candidate Nate McMurray is calling to make sure all votes are counted before conceding. Good evening to you. We'll have more on that developing news involving Jeff Sessions in just a few minutes. But first, the latest on Nate McMurray's request. Both he and Congressman Chris Collins' campaign just held news conferences. And News 4's Chris Hervatas is here to join us with their message tonight. Chris? Hi, Don. And I want to ask our viewers to pay very close attention to the timeline I'm about to lay out because this will sound confusing to some of you. Around 11 last night, Democrat Nate McMurray said it looks like he was coming up a little bit short in his race against Collins. And that prompted the Collins campaign to declare victory. Then just two hours later, McMurray called for a recount. Just, just an hour votes. ago then, Again, McMurray so said he basically misspoke when calling for a recount and that he just wants to make sure all of the votes are counted. Right now he trails Collins by about 3,000 votes and there are thousands of absentee votes to be counted. We'll explain just how many in just a few moments. McMurray spoke to the media less than an hour ago and he said his speech last night was actually not a concession speech. Well, I did not concede. That, that was the word that the media used. I never used that word. I said, it looks like we're falling a little short. Now, remember who we had in this room last night. We had rooms of parents and moms and children. And it was 1130 at night. And I wanted to get some of those people home. They were tired. Data and facts are stubborn things. And Congressman Collins won this race yesterday. He won a majority of the counties. He won. He won in clear and convincing fashion. And it's time for Nate McMurray to let the voters' will stand. That was Collins campaign advisor Chris Grant, who also spoke with the media this afternoon. McMurray says there are still 18,000 votes to be counted, with Collins just 3,000 votes ahead. But our number differs. I called all of the boards of election in the 27th district today and determined there are somewhere between 10 and 11,000 absentee ballots to be counted still. That number will increase as they continue to come in over the next few days. McMurray says his number includes affidavit and emergency ballots, but elections officials I spoke with say there's just no way to determine how many affidavit ballots there are and that emergency ballots have already been counted. At 6, I'll tell you when those absentee ballots will get counted. In the newsroom, Chris Horvath, it's News 4. And now to our other developing story tonight. Jeff Sessions has been forced to resign as U.S. Attorney General at the request of President Trump. The president tweeted earlier this afternoon saying, quote, we thank Attorney General Jeff Sessions for his service and wish him well. The president had repeatedly criticized Sessions for recusing himself from the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 elections. Speaking earlier today, the president was asked about changes to his cabinet. I'm very happy with most of my cabinet. Uh, we're looking at uh, different people for different positions. You know, it's very common after the midterms. Sessions' abrupt resignation comes just one day after the midterm elections, where Democrats won enough seats to retake control of the House. Republicans expanded their hold on the Senate. And News 4 is your local election headquarters. You can find results from races in our area, statewide and nationwide, on our website and our News 4 app. Some people were being very frantic. Some were not. Some thought it was a joke, fake. So there were some people crying, calling parents, texting parents. Police and school officials take no chances with an anonymous threat at Lockport High School. More than 1,000 students and staff were quickly sent home as police moved in with bomb-sniffing dogs. News Force George Rickert tells us how this all unfolded today. George? Well, Lockport police say this was a digital threat, which someone posted on the anonymous tip line of the school district's website. It simply said something about devices being in the school. So right around second period, before 9 a.m., the search for any such device began. For the next several hours, nearly a dozen bomb-sniffing dogs 
dogs from police agencies like the Niagara County Sheriff's Office. State police and the NFTA scoured all the rooms of the school but never found any trace of explosives. Now it's being treated as a criminal investigation as police try to track down who made the threat. Within 30 minutes of the threat being discovered, the school was evacuated and parents were being notified by global notification that depending on their child's age, they were either going home or needed to be picked up. We've had a couple other threats in the earlier of the year, and they didn't close down the school. They didn't evacuate. They didn't do anything. So when you see this going on and hear, you know, your daughter's voice and this loudspeaker and everything, I don't think this is a joke, and it's a little too close to home. This is a matter that we don't take lightly, as you can see with the amount of manpower that we have here. And I know the school district, the first and foremost thing is the safety of, of, their, um, of our children and of their employees. So far, no arrests have been made in this threat, but Lockport police are working with a computer lab in Buffalo and eventually may enlist the help of federal law enforcement technology. Again, no actual explosive devices were found in the school. George Rickert, News 4 at 5. Wind and heavy rains took a toll in some parts of western New York last night. Crews were out early this morning in the Elmwood Village cutting those tree limbs that had come crashing down. Well, it was a much calmer scene right now over downtown Buffalo, and we're going to head over to check in with our chief meteorologist, Todd Santos. He has the latest. Todd? And, yeah, we are still looking at uh, at least some gusty winds. Do think the gust potential dies down overnight tonight. 